Ignar Halukbay. Добрый день, Оксана. Mr. Director, thank you for agreeing to this interview. My first question would be, your UAVs, Bayraktar TB2, have become a true legend of the Russian-Ukrainian war. I mean, people in Ukraine basically name their children and pets, embroider on the national clothes and think songs. How does it feel to be the CEO of such a company? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for this interview. You know, between Turkey and Ukraine, there is a high level of strategic cooperation and unmanned aerial vehicles are one of the critical elements of it. It dates back to four or five years back when we started cooperation in this field. And unfortunately, this war, this aggression started and the systems are effectively used on the field and it became one of the uh, popular elements uh, to fight against and to protect your homeland and for your independence. So we actually, as a manufacturer of it and as, as a friend of Ukraine, we are proud uh, that Bayraktar TB2 are one of the symbols and, and we are trying to show our best technical support for Ukrainians and uh, for the military to get the most out of the systems uh, for them to be affected. Just a couple of days ago, you met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Could you please reveal some details of this meeting and whether there were any negotiations? The, the living meeting was very warm. It was uh, very uh, fruitful, I think, and in, it, it was in a, such a critical time. Turkey actually is trying his best to establish, uh, to stop this and to establish and uh, so in that manner i think it was fruitful there was some uh, agreements actually uh, for turkey's support on the restoration of ukraine and um, so it was a it was in a very warm environment and i think it was uh, it was very effective uh, and i wish it it helps uh, uh, for ukraine as well uh, to uh, for the peace and uh, for the upcoming period. In that manner, it was really an effective and a very uh, uh, good meeting, actually. Mr. Bayraktar, are you personally satisfied with the work of Bayraktar TB2 in Ukraine? How do Ukrainian soldiers use them? And maybe you see something can be improved? Unmanned aerial systems, and uh, they, they, they are force multipliers on the field. They really help the uh, help the users to have uh, 24 hours situational awareness and for for long endurance uh, surveillance so they they support uh, activities of the field and and uh, this systems uh, in in the case of ukraine you know before the war we have trained ukrainian operators so they are effectively using them and i am following it from the media as well and as far as i see they are uh, effectively used and benefited and, and of course these technologies are high-end and depending on the feedback from the field they are improved continuously so we can we can easily say that you know the ukrainian operators are doing their best and performing very well with their skills uh, to use uh, the systems actually have i understood right you receive uh, some feedback from our army yes we as bicar for years uh, giving technical support uh, to Ukraine. It didn't start with the war. It was years before we have established a local company there. We have our technical staff supporting and to, to keep the fleet alive. And if there is any problem, technical problem, uh, to support with it and to maintain the systems. Uh, this is the same with, uh, you know, with Turkey as well. I mean, there is always a continuous feedback and development mechanisms. And as you know, Bayraktar TB2 before has been effectively used in not only in Turkey and other sides of the world, in Azerbaijan, in uh, northern Syria, in you know, other countries, and we, it has a, a lot of experience on the on different arenas. So a lot of uh, feedbacks and updates on the system. So it is uh, it's a resistant to many uh, adverse effects on the field in that regard. But still, every environment has its own dynamics, and you really need to keep to update with the system so that they, they are running this. By car companies' orders are planned for three years and you currently cooperate with more than 2,000 countries. Did the war in Ukraine affect production? Bayraktar TB2, wherever it is deployed, uh, it has really uh, proven uh, itself on the field. It supported uh, the operations in a, and and gave the results. So it's when you look at it, 
look at its performance cost ratio it's a really high-end system and when you, when you you look at the specific uh, cases uh, it really uh, played uh, very uh, critical roles uh, so it was it was already a well-known system in the world but of course in the case of ukraine especially this war actually the the war is on on the european continent so it uh, on the european uh, side it it really uh, raised awareness uh, more and it attracted attention actually on the special specific on the europe uh, european side and um, and and also uh, uavs before were kind of thought to be effective technologies in asymmetric warfare but now in the case of ukraine uh, ukraine is facing such a uh, big aggression on, on the conventional uh, style war so so these systems, these technologies, they it, it once again showed that even in such uh, cases, all countries uh, actually uh, has has a need to protect their homeland and sovereignty for such technologies. Actually, how do you personally assess the possibility of uh, an aggressive country obtaining uh, the uh, production technology of such level? We as Baikar, we have been for years investing investing in Turkey and also cooperating as well with Ukraine on these technologies and these are uh, living organisms and it, it takes long years to come up for, for such strategic assets to come up effective solutions. We have been investing more, for more than about 20 years right now. It takes years of investing in the research and manufacturing to come up with uh, such uh, technologies and these technologies are not available very easily on the market. For example, Turkey wanted to buy them from uh, from other countries, from US and Israel. We faced a lot of difficulties. So they were not selling us with our money these products, but then we ended up uh, delivering our own country and our you know brother nations like Ukraine, these technologies in the utmost uh, manner. And in Ukraine, it was a similar case. In Ukraine, uh, you know, in the year of 2018, Ukraine wanted to procure un unmanned aerial systems. No country except Turkey accept accepted to cooperate uh, with Ukraine uh, on these technologies. And uh, so the, the, the use of Bayraktar TB2 and the, the results that you see right now, they were, it dates back to four or five years back when we started uh, this cooperation uh, actually. If we can say your drones are a little bit Ukrainian, I mean, uh, some details in uh, unmanned aerial vehicles are from our manufacturers. Could you please explain for a Ukrainian audience, especially for those who do not understand much in technical details, what is it about? What actually details are? So, uh, first of all, uh, Turkey and Ukraine have a strategic level relationship. There is a high level strategic council between our countries since 2011. Between Turkey and Ukraine, it, the, the cooperation in the field of aerospace and defense speeded up after Bayraktar TB2 entering the inventory of Ukraine. So it is a model where both sides benefit, where both sides really create independent source of supply chains and create self-sufficiency. We have a plant project in Ukraine, uh, which started uh, years back when President Zelensky visited Baikar in the year of 2019 August. Uh, there was a trip of President Zelensky to Turkey, uh, to Turkey, and in that trip he visited Baikar, where at the same time, at that moment, we had Ukrainian operators being were being tra trained in Turkey. He greeted them in our facilities, and uh, he visited our facilities as well. And when he see he saw the uh, the infrastructure here, he asked us to uh, to embark on a plant project in Ukraine where we would do not only manufacturing but also research of these technologies as well. And since then we started this project and it is moving on. In that regard, Ukraine is one of the few countries in the world who has capability of uh, manufacturing turbine engines. And uh, in our strategic level uh, unmanned systems, as our countries have this close cooperation, we decided to use Ukrainian engines in our products, especially on Akinji. Akinji is a strategic level system. Akinji made its first flight with, Ukra with a Ukrainian engine. And we have delivered Akinji uh, unmanned systems to Turkish military 
which were equipped by Ukrainian engines. And now we are working on an unmanned fighter technology named Kızıl Elma. And Kızıl Elma is as well equipped with Ukrainian engine as well. So it's uh, between our countries, it's such a uh, relationship that really uh, gives us results and benefits uh, both sides. Uh, we have a plan of this establishing this plant in Ukraine where especially imagine you know unmanned fight like Kızıl Elma it's a new generation and uh, it's the future of military aerospace our ambassador to Turkey announced the construction could you please reveal some details what are your plans did the war make its adjustments the plan was started actually when president zelensky visited baykar at that moment we decided to do it and since then, we are working on it. So we are working uh, the design process of the uh, plant, its layout, and also uh, we bought a invest. Uh, we bought a land where uh, this factory factory will be built on. We as well started the official applications uh, to start uh, to 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 make it happen. And also in, in February uh, three uh, two thousand twenty two, there was a high level visit. Uh, of our President Erdogan to uh, to Kiev, and at that visit, uh, two agreements, uh, uh, two big agreements were signed. One of, one of them was free trade agreement, and that agreement uh, wa was actually a, 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 a significant facilitator of this uh, plan as well. To to make this happen, this agreement was really critical, and it was signed on uh, 3 February before the war. You know, the, then the war started. But our plans are still active and running, and we are uh, keeping our work, keeping our deadlines for it. So uh, it is it is moving on, actually. Thanks to you, AV's Barakhtar TB2, we have seen a real phenomenon. I mean, ordinary people, not just governments of states, fundraising money on a short notice. Lithuania, Poland and Ukraine have already done it and you generously offered them for free. How did you make this decision and why? It was also uh, really surprising for us to see uh, donations in Ukraine, in Lithuania, in uh, Poland and now it, it is running in Latvia. So people from all over the world, not only in Ukraine, trying to support Ukraine and trying to support its uh, war uh, against its aggression and for its independence. We as Baikar, with our staff and everyone, uh, actually wanted to be part of it. We, because we, we as company as have our own principles and in, in such uh, bad times, we, we as well have our responsibility as a company, as human beings, to support and do his best for Ukraine. And in that regard, in all, this camp all of these campaigns, which we started with Lithuania, we made a decision that we will not uh, receive the funds that is collected. We will guide and guide these funds to be used for humanitarian uh, projects for Ukraine, for Ukrainian people, and we will give this UAVs free. So uh, we have a lot of friends in Ukraine, and we know how, um, how full of life they are. In, in our last trip to Lviv, I have seen it also once again very clearly. Have you been following the news where Ukraine spent all this saved money? I follow it from the media. Uh, Lithuania, uh, Lithuania campaign, they, they tell it, they, they tell about it, how they use the money. And then uh, they, uh, for the U uh, Ukraine, the Pritula Foundation, uh, they, they collected a big amount of funds and we offered them, we will give you free. And now Pritula Foundation declared that they, are used, they use the money to buy a satellite, imaging satellite, to support Ukraine. So we follow it as you do on, from the media, actually. So uh, we do our responsibility by attending this fund, by giving our, donating our uh, armed uh, UAVs. And uh, the funds, they take their decision and to use it for the, for the sake of Ukraine, actually. It was a pleasure to talk with you and I would like personally to thank you for your position, for, for what you are doing for Ukrainian people. Thank you, thank you dear uh, Oksana for this interview and we always wish and pray uh, for, for a 
lasting uh, peace and a just resolution and for Ukraine. May peace be in Ukraine. Thank you so much. Have a nice day, Halim Bey. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.